gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark by Laurie Wyman and starring Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee. <laughs> Uh, most of us think about marriage sometime. Captain Povey is married and doesn't like to think about it any time. <laughs> Sub Lieutenant Phillips thinks you can spot a married chap by the wrinkles on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> they're not wrinkles, they're marriage lines. <laughs> but uh, romance comes to all of us eventually, even if, as in Lieutenant Commander Murray's case, you don't know about it. <laughs> At this very minute, Admiral Fafont Bittux is in Captain Povey's office to discuss the future of his eager daughter, Rita. Oh, stop beating about the bush, Povey. Is this twit Murray suitable to marry me daughter or isn't he? Well, I hardly think I'd care to make a decision on that. Do stop flanneling, Povey. When are his two character references going to see me? Yes, sir. Are those two idiots from Troutbridge out there? Yes, sir. Well, send the fools in. With the utmost pleasure, sir. No! <laughs> Got you. Mr. Phillips, please. Of course, I can never refuse a lady. Huh? No! <laughs> <laughs> at once, friend Jason, at once! My word, I'm sorry I missed that. It sounded fun. <laughs> Sub Lieutenant Phillips. No! And CPO Pertwee to see you. Oh, and uh, good morning, Admiral. No! <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is a good morning now. <laughs> well, really, you men are all the same. However, how about me having a quick... Don't you dare! <laughs> a cup of tea. Right, well, that's the morning PT over. <laughs> Let's get down to business. Now, I suppose you chaps know about the forthcoming engagement between Lieutenant Commander Murray and Miss Rita Fafont Pittox, my daughter. Well, sir, we know about it. I mean, you know about it. Captain Povey knows about it. Miss Rita Fafont Pittox knows about it. <laughs> But up to now, I should think it's highly unlikely that Lieutenant Commander Murray knows about it. <laughs> well, he will. Once my daughter makes up her mind, she's just like my dear old bat of a wife. You can fight like hell, but you had it from the off. <laughs> if you're asking my opinion, Admiral... I'm not, so shut up, Povey. Now, you two chaps, what's your opinion of Murray? Hmm? Well, I'd say that he was... Steady on, Chief. We mustn't let the governor down. I don't want to interrupt her, but I am afraid I really No, must... you mustn't, Povey. You should have seen to that before we started. <laughs> right, now, there's only ten minutes to opening time, so let's get this ghastly mess cleared up. Now, is this idiot Murray the sort of fool I can accept as a son-in-law? Well, sir, knowing your idiot syncrasies, I'd say that he was a man after your own heart, sir. He drinks, of course. But, uh, but not enough that he can't guide you home at the end of the jollifications. Ah, oh, now that's more blasted like it. Yeah, I, I like the sound of him. Oh, good, good. Oh, that's settled. Uh, can I be best man, sir? I've got the suit, and my father lent it to me for my own oh, wedding. Do shut up, Povey. Now, does this chap Murray swim? Now, that's very important. Why, sir? Well, I have been known to topple in the pond outside the pub on my way home. <laughs> No worries there, sir. A few years ago, I fell in the drink, and without a thought, he jumped in to save me. That's right, sir. Then I had to jump in and save the pair on her. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't sound so good. No, it's just my little joke, sir. Commander Murray swims like a fish. A fried one. <laughs> I've always wanted to be the best man and, and read all those funny telegrams. That's why I've kept the suit. Povey, I know exactly how you can help. Do you, sir? What's that? Shut your wedding cake hole. <laughs> now then, uh, transport. Can he ride a bike? <laughs> ride a bike? Very important, that. You see, I use it to nip down to the pub dead on opening time, but for some reason it always takes me two hours to get on the blasted thing again afterwards. <laughs> then two quick whiz rounds with me trotters and I fall off the blasted thing again and bend me clips. <laughs> oh, nasty. It is, it is very. I want someone to lift me onto the crossbar and scoot me home, you see. Well, I don't know whether he'd do that, sir. But I'm sure he'd be the first volunteer to give you a piggyback, sir. 
Fair enough, that's settled then. The very man for me daughter. Uh, right then, I'll get my suit out this evening and sponge the green mould off the lapels. <laughs> uh, with due receptacle, sir. What? It may be settled as far as, uh, as far as you are concerned, but is it settled as far as Commander Murray is concerned, sir? Well, what's he got to do with it? He's meeting me daughter in Gosport High Street outside the jewellers. Well, that should give the poor twit a clue. Night and day, greeters the one. <laughs> Only her beneath the moon and on the sun. In the roaring traffic's moon. Uh, oh, Rita! Oh, here I am! Stevikins, darling, there you are. Uh, hello, Rita. Well, aren't you going to open the door for me? Oh, I'd love to, dearest, but I can't quite reach the handle from here. Well, then move nearer, you helpless old Stevie Kins. Well, I, I can't. You've parked the rear wheel of your horse box on my foot again. <laughs> oh, silly me. I shall not be a tick. <laughs> Well, it is for me, but I, I doubt if it is for the gentleman who parked his rolls behind you. <laughs> oh, don't mind him and his silly old rollers. These things happen. Oh, poor Stevie Kins' footykins. And to think that Rita Kins is to blame. No, 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 no. It, it was all my fault. I, I shouldn't have left my foot on the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, do you mind if I sit down for a moment? My foot's beginning to come round. Oh, 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 my word, they can throb. Oh. Odd, isn't it? I mean, the wheel was hardly on it for a minute. Yes. That's just because it's the same one you parked on last time. Uh, there, there. Now, let Weetikins massage Stevikins' poor bull's hoof. Oh, go on, oh, proud face. Sit on the car. No, no, I, I, I'd i rather not. I, it, it'll be all... all... Sit. Um. There you are. Now, let's have your little shoeykins offikins, that's right. Now then, let's see what the damage is. I promise I won't hurt. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. This little piggy had... This little... Oh, what a shame. Mm. Uh, what is it? That naughty old Bussikins ran over Stevikins' shoe and smashed it. <laughs> I'm afraid Stevikins is going to have to buy another pair. No, 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 no it's all right. Doesn't matter, I'm, I'm wearing thick socks. <laughs> we, uh, we don't want to waste these precious moments together in nasty old shoe shops, do we? <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> Even in your socks, you just can't wait to get into the jeweler's shop and choose it, can you? Hmm? Uh, I'm sorry if I don't seem to be concentrating, but uh, sitting on that wet pavement has created a slight problem. The puddle I was in seems to have seeped through my uniform trousers to my, my, my um, oh, my goodness, it is good to see you. Hmm, <laughs> I do see what you mean. Now everybody will know you've had a little accident. Uh, Right. Still, we mustn't let it spoil our day. Now then, look in the window. I'm not sure what you had in mind, but I like the one in the tray on the right. Oh, yes, it's very nice. But I, I thought you already had a travelling clock in your horse van. <laughs> if you remember, it tore my trousers and gave my knee a nasty gash when it fell out of the glove pocket just before you hit the dust cart. <laughs> Road hogs. How they ever get a driving license is beyond me. Hmm. Oh, isn't that odd? It's just what that brute of a dust cart driver said about you. <laughs> Honestly, if I hadn't been trapped under the seat at the time, I, I, I think I'd have struck him. <laughs> Impetuous boy. Uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was known as Mad Cat Murray at school. <laughs> Whenever we got up to schoolboy pranks in the sixth, I, I, I was always the ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> ringleader. <laughs> Trust you for the subtle approach. Now, how do you feel about that diamond solitaire? Hmm? The third one on the right. 
Uh, very pretty. Good. Then we're agreed. I'll have that one. This way, Stevie Kings. No, 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 just a minute. I, I mean, that, that's an engagement ring, and this is the first time I've heard about... Uh, Doesn't uh, Stevie Kins want to marry his weak kins? Well, of course I do, Kins. I, 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 I do. <laughs> it's just that I... I thought you'd never ask. Uh -huh. <laughs> Now then, um, with the confetti blowing in an easterly direction and eight bells ringing out the joyous news that somebody has dropped a clangor of a lifetime, I say that what we need now is a spot of the old left hand uh, da 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 down a bit. Left hand da 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 down a bit it is. All sir. right, you had your little joke <laughs> several times. Joke, sir? On the eve of this most auspicious occasion? Whatever would your intended say about that? Intended? What's he intending? <laughs> That's no concern of ours, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> that happens after the ceremony. <laughs> oh, no, look, I've just about had enough of this. Just to think that this time, tomorrow night, he'll be... Uh... <laughs> A married man. <laughs> <laughs> Here for one moment there, my mind panicked and wondered what the heck you were going to say, sir. <laughs> uh, so did I. Now, will you two get into your thick heads that this engagement was entirely my own idea? I'm very fond of Miss Fond Bittrex. Fancy. <laughs> yes, I, for, for one, for, feel for frightfully for flattered. Uh, being asked to follow you as the finest fellow on this festive occasion. <laughs> Tailors all round, chaps. Just checking up that you're all for feeling for fit. For feeling for fit. We've, We've done, done all that. As the actress said to my ecclesiastical superior. Now, chaps, I am a little concerned about this, uh, mission. As a chap of the cloth, I feel I must point out that it's a bit off for the Admiral <laughs> to order us over to Calais to collect some cheap booze for the wedding nausea. No, no, it's quite in order, Padre. The bottles are bubbling a gift from a colleague of my f f f f f f future father-in-law. <laughs> yeah, they'll get customs clearance straight away, Padre. The crates are all marked. Steve Akins for the swigging of with the compliments of Daddy. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to hear very much more of this. According to the Admiral, all we have to do is to dock at Calais, pick up the crates of champagne, and get back to Portsmouth in time for my... Uh, for my wedding. Ah, the wedding. And that reminds me. I've been doing a bit of uh, swatting up, and it appears unto me that when I do the bit about do you, Stephen, uh, something or other, take this woman, I've got to know what is the something or other. Uh, mm? <laughs> I think the Padre wants to know your second name, sir. <laughs> yes, so do I, sir. <laughs> oh, uh, <coughs> is it strictly necessary? It is written that I should know your full handle. Oh. <laughs> we, uh, well, uh, if you must know, it's... It, it, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't quite catch that, sir. And neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all waiting, Stevie Kins. <laughs> oh, well, well, if you insist, my middle name is, um, mm, Butterfield. <laughs> Lumbered with it, I don't suppose it is. <laughs> Butter for Fieldykins. Excuse me, gents. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Murray. Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I'm still here, Hoskins. Very good, sir. Just check it. Sorry you've been troubled. Who is that civvy? What's he doing on board? Oh, uh, he's um, private detective employed by my fiancée, Rita. <laughs> See that I don't come to any harm before the wedding. Ha, ha, ha.
You mean to see that you get back in time for it? No, not at all. Mind you, I think she has gone a shade too far in her concern for my safety. I, nevertheless, when we get to Calais, uh, we'll all three go ashore to sign for the Admiral Champagne and ever so slightly forget to return to the ship until I've had my evening out. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Fancy you taking us to the theater, Commander Marizer. The last time I went, I saw Barbara Mallon in Little Women. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, uh, judging by the posters, this evening's entertainment may be a touch different. <laughs> For starters, I'd say that Boo Boo Le Grand had a slightly more exaggerated appearance than Miss Mallon. <laughs> And in no circumstances can she be classified as a little woman. <laughs> no, ho, ho, ho. I hope she speaks English. Well, some people are never satisfied. Now, I love this way, chaps. Uh, excuse me, Miss uh, uh, Mademoiselle Box Office Lady. Ah, we? Oui? Are we what? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope we are. <laughs> yes, needless to me, gentlemen. Uh, three seats in the stalls, Miss uh, Mademoiselle Box Office Lady. Uh, come on, Marie, sir. I don't seem to have my French money wallet with me, sir. No, it's all right, Chief. Seats are on me. Oh, no, no. Vous êtes Commander Marie? Uh, yes. That is the officer's name, madam. Ah, he is the one you are waiting for, Mr. Hoskins. Certainly, madam. I'm sorry, Lieutenant Commander Murray. I have a message for you. Signal reads, Admiral Vafont Bittux to Lieutenant Commander Murray. Come out of there. I know what blasted sailors blasted are. See you in church if you value your blasted life. Blasted regards from blasted daddy kids. <laughs> message blasted ends. How blasted kind of him. Now what do we do? Alternative entertainment has been arranged for you, sirs. And the best of British. Ah, uh, Snow uh, Quidock. I've got to stop. I've got to stop so my tired twitches won't trot no further. Oh, all right. I think we've shaken horrible Hoskins off now. Yeah, the only thing is, where, where are we? That, Mr. Phillips, as our navigating officer, is the story of your life. Be kind to him, Commander Murray. He's used to not knowing where he is on the sea, but now he don't know where he is on land either. <laughs> if you both quite finished, I suggest we turn left hand down a bit and have a look in this street. Now, it's called uh, La Rue de la Thousand Lanterns. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I think he's right, sir. Because look, there's the sign of the swinging G bra. <laughs> oh, nasty. <laughs> Bras is the French for arms, sir. Lummy. <laughs> if they think that, they're missing something. <laughs> Hello, big boy, and watch your cocky. <laughs> you want a good time, huh? <laughs> What a wonderful command she has of the English language. Ah, well, this is more the sort of thing we had in mind. <laughs> mon chéri, mon trésor, mon petit chou. Well, if your shoes are too petite, take them off, girl. <laughs> this way, gentlemen, we go into the Moulin Rouge Café. Ooh. Only it is a path. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Murray and party, they're here. The table is reserved. Hey, just a minute. How did you know Commander Murray's name? Yeah, where did the ooh -la, la bit go then? Perhaps I'd better introduce myself. I'm Mabel Clunthorpe, assistant to Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> I've been trailing you ever since you thought you'd shaken off Mr. Hoskins. Pot of tea for three, buttered buns and toasted tea cakes all round. <laughs> <laughs> and the bill goes to Admiral for Font Buttocks. Well, Rita 
here, darling. I, I must say, the uh, wedding seemed to go off terribly well. Mind you, it was a nasty moment when you caught your veil in the offertory box. It sort of held things up a bit while the Padre tried to nail it together again. <laughs> yes, I was so humiliated when I tried to move away and find he'd nailed my horseshoe inside it. <laughs> Still, we are married at last, and from now on, I shall devote my whole life to looking after you. Oh, oh good. Then perhaps you'd like to start by taking the leg of your chair off my foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Stevie Chins, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, 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 it's... Entirely my fault. I shouldn't have left my foot lying around on the floor. Oh, poor Stevikins. Now let me take your shoe off and rub it. For no, no, you. no, no, please. No, I no, I keep my shoe on. No, no. Oh, oh, do come out from under the table, Rita Kins. Oh, no, no, you two. Break it up. We're only halfway through the reception. No, no, Admiral. This is the permissive society. Mm -hmm. And now they have been joined one unto another, they are permissed. <laughs> They are permissed. Hey, hello, Mr. Murray, sir. <laughs> At it already, are we? <laughs> <laughs> under the under the, under the table, are we? Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's got to look good in the local paper. No, isn't no, it? no, no, don't, Chief. Uh, Rita's merely um, rubbing my shoe. That's 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 a star, sir. Yeah. Get them domesticated, domesticated, get them, get them dominated, dom, get them decimated. <laughs> Show them who's boss. I mean, you, I mean, you, I mean, you don't want to end up completely under the wife's thumb, like that poor old twit Captain Pove is here. You were saying, Chief? <laughs> I was saying I wished I was dead. <laughs> As far as your future naval career is concerned, CPO Pertwee, you are. I thought I was. <laughs> Cheers. Um, bell bottoms up. ta -da. Oh, oh, that reminds me. It's time I damp down my lapels again. Rita Kins, never mind my shoe. For goodness sake, come and sit up at the table. Mr. Phillips wants to make his speech and read the telegrams. Uh, friends and, uh, and guests and, uh, Relatives and, uh... Admiral! Uh, thanks very much, yes. It, it forced me, as a, as a bachelor, to give you some advice. Now, after looking at the happy pair... <laughs> uh, the happy pair... <laughs> and, um, and uh, wondering what it's like... Uh, uh, to be married, I mean. Uh, because there are very few bachelors that are, you know. And, which reminds me of a story. <laughs> Which I seem to have forgotten, really. So, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll read the telegram. Thanks so much, Padre. <laughs> the telegram is from Commander Weatherby at Naval Security and reads... Today is the day. But the two days today, the two two nights the night. I've shot the stalk, so you're all right. <laughs> signed, uh, signed, Commander, 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 Signed me. Right then, that's the end of the telegrams. Let's get the booze flag again. Yeah, but, uh, Excuse me. But it's silly. Has, there, has everybody, anybody noticed the booze seems to have run out? <laughs> Perhaps the bottles bleat. <laughs> and I think we all know where they bleat. <laughs> I'm sorry, pardon. I'm sure it's never, never demands. I think I'll, I think I'll, I think I'll have, I think I'll, I'll have, I'll have, I'll have a bit of a nap. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Excuse me. I represent Her Majesty's Customs, and according to our record, several crates of Champagne left France <laughs> aboard HMS Troutbridge for this year due. According to our accounts, the Admiral owes us the sum of £127, 10 shillings. Oh, that's all right. A muddy pay the idiot will have... What? Come on, fair's fair. I got the champagne for nothing. The least you can do is pay for the duty. <laughs> well, look, think of it as your dowry, Murray. Right, fill them up all round, and mine's the first glass. Oi, wait up! <laughs> Mr. 
With the assistance of Leslie Phillips and John Pertwee, Stephen Murray has been getting spliced in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was a sub-lieutenant, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Stephen Murray was the CO, Captain Pertwee was played by Richard Caldicott, Rita was Heather Chaston, the Admiral was Tenuel Evans, and the Padre was played by Michael Bates. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. Thank <laughs> you.